Oh, PC fam, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you at. You know the chill with chill show. It's so international. Chill town, how you living? We everywhere, B. You know what time it is with us. We are not yeah. sort of kinda in places. We all over the place, and we in your time zone. Whenever you can see us, yo, tune in. You know what time it is with us. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Hope everybody is healthy, happy, vibing today, full of energy, ready to go outside, get some fresh mm -hmm. air, get some cardio. It is springtime. It's beautiful out here. Even in even in Portland, Oregon, the sun is shining. It's a lovely day. It's Saturday. Y'all know this is the best day. Man, chill. What's going on? You watching any any college last night? Uh, you plan on watching any today? The tournament is in full swing. Sweet sixteen. Not only is the tournament in full swing, because you're the one who turned me on to it. Even though I'd already been watching women's college basketball, you kind of yeah. kind of turned me on to it a little bit more. And uh, yeah, the, the, the Stanford women they ended up getting served last night, right? mm -hmm. and that's largely due to Cameron Wink. She got hurt. I mean, she 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 fouled out. But she was a force right. before she found out. I, I was trying, I was paying specific attention to her because I'm thinking to myself, all right, Ox is big on this chick, Cameron Brick. He thinks she's the best player in the country. So I'm thinking, mm -hmm. okay, so what makes her the best player in the country? What does she do? Well, the one thing she does is she controls the paint. I think she right. had five blocks last night. Yeah. So when you got a big like in that the in, the in the first half, I believe. Yeah, I think she had five blocks last night. So when you got a big that's controlling the paint like that, you could basically control the game. Right. So when she's doing that, that's making life a lot more difficult for that defense. I mean, a lot more difficult for their offense. So I saw that going on. All right. Then I'm watching her on the block. How they get her the basketball. Well, she's also versatile, too. Ox. I didn't know that she could step out and knock down 15 footers. I didn't know she could play in the mid post because I'm so wrapped up in Caitlin Clark and Juju. Right. And, and, and the big girl from Iowa State that I'm thinking, all right, this girl, maybe she's just. Not, not a Rudy Gobert type of player, but more like an extension of that. That that's that's what I'm thinking. Only mm -hmm. only to find out that Ox, she might be right. She might be the national player of the year. She she I know, added I that. Know she, it, I know they're gonna give it to Caitlin Clark, but she might oh, be. Yeah. She and it's it's well deserving for Caitlin Clark. Like if mm -hmm. it goes to Caitlin Clark, I don't think anybody has the right to be upset. Right. Uh, but uh Cameron Brink, she added that stepping that out. This this season was something she really put into her game. Last year, I saw her knocking that mirrors down a little bit, but this year, I saw early in the season, I saw her shooting that like with intention to let to to you know let him know you got to step out and come get me now because she'll put it she on. She didn't have that last year. She didn't have I, that last year. I, 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 I believe she did. I, it just mm -hmm. wasn't like this. So I think she added more intention to it. And right. also, Steph, Steph Curry, Steph Curry kind of gets involved with the uh, with with Stanford basketball, mm -hmm. so. You know, I know Steph is kind of making it a point to kind of get with the younger players and get with the youth, get with get involved more in the women's game. Um, yeah. And so, I, I, you know, uh, they got a they got another uh, young lady over there, not Kiki. We we know about Kiki, but uh, that's a young lady. She's a shooter, uh, Hannah Pond, I think. And last night, I was kind of curious because they were down to NC State, which in my bracket, this is how I got it. I got NC State beating Stanford. I also mm -hmm. have I also have um, UCLA beating LSU today too. Um, mm. um, I even actually I even had South Carolina losing to Indiana last night. But you did tell me that. Yes, you did. Yeah, that's I got that one wrong in Notre Dame. I got Notre Dame wrong. So Notre Dame. Took which the by the way. Before. Which, by the way, turned into a dog fight in Indy, with Indiana and South Carolina. They were up 22 in the second half. Next thing I know, Indiana is getting on the glass. Next thing I know, Indiana is creating turnovers. And I'm trying to figure out, yo, what's going on? Indiana mm -hmm. basically matched South Carolina's physicality. They couldn't mm -hmm. really do nothing with Cardoza, though. They couldn't do anything. With right. As much, right. As, big as, 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 as much as they did defensively on the wing, they just couldn't do anything with her. She was just too much for them. I understand. I do. Mm -hmm. And also the game, the game that I really enjoyed last night was actually my my national champion winner is Texas. You did tell me that I was yes, I watched Texas play last night and they just dominated Gonzaga. Gonzaga is the best shooting team in the country, and they shut the they door on do them. They couldn't do anything. Points, with, I think. Yeah, yeah, they couldn't do anything with with Texas. So that was great. I hope y'all not missing out on college basketball on the women's and men's side. Men's men's side is going is, is great too. NC State on the men's side is doing very well. They just beat number two Marquette. Um, they're on a heck of a run, Chilltown. Yes, like they are. what they did in the in the in the, uh, in the ACC championship uh, tournament to this. I thought they were losing last night to Marquette. My, that's how my bracket goes. I had yeah. Marquette winning last night um, against them and. 
That was nine in a row last night for NC State. They're on a nine-game winning streak. Yeah, no doubt. Those young men are doing it. What's the big girl name from Texas? She's a force in the paint. Um, um, oh, 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 um, uh, Aaliyah, Aaliyah Moore. Aaliyah, yeah, Aaliyah that's her. Moore. Aaliyah that's Moore. her. Yeah. Glass yeah. cleaner. Oh, yeah. Glass like cleaner. Her. And I'm, I'm, I'm watching her, and I'm thinking, whoever's going to see Texas, you better have your hard hat. You better have your lunch pail because she is coming to work. Oh, she yeah. does not play games. I dig her. I dig everything I'm, about her game, One, no doubt. The, that Texas team is really good. They got some shooters over there. Um, the the young lady that she's uh, – what's her name? Uh, uh, player of the uh, – player of the conference. Um, they, they got a good team over there. Too. I really like what they got going over there. They're, they're, they're physical. They play defense. They shoot the yep. ball. Heck of a coach over there. I'm excited. I'm excited right now, y'all. I'm, I'm really trying to get to an elite that game to, uh, um, tomorrow because they are mm-hmm. in Portland. So I couldn't make I couldn't make oh. any games. Yeah, I couldn't make any games yesterday. Unfortunately, right. Stanford lost, and I wanted to see them tomorrow. But mm-hmm. yeah, I, I, you know, yeah, I got to get to one of these games though. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. But uh, on to the NBA. Um, mm-hmm. uh, real quick, let me get to this super chat because uh, we did actually touch on this. I didn't know this. Winter said, "Fun fact: Cameron Brink is Steph Curry's god sister." That's dope. Uh, I didn't know that. Okay, I didn't know that either. That's dope. Okay, Winter. I hope you're not. I hope you're not tr- uh, trolling me right now. Yeah, but that's um, dope. yeah, that's that is that is. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, hold on, y'all. My bad. Let me, let me send this link out. I'm gonna get the link out early today. I've been mm-hmm. trying to do that more more often. We can get some early visitors. Mm-hmm. Um, give me a second. Bear with me, y'all. Here we go. Got it out mm-hmm. there now. Uh, we got another super chat from Logan Messiah. Sorry, but the Thunder aren't going to the finals. Currently, as I see it, it's either the Mavs or Nuggets. Luka and Jokic different in the playoffs. I'll, 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 I'll argue that. I will not argue that. Um, that Minnesota team, who we're going to talk about in a little bit, I think they're going to have something to say about that. And I think that it's going to be largely due to how they change their offense. Largely due mm-hmm. to how they change, not just change their offense, because I don't think they need to change much. I feel like they need to utilize more in their offense. Well, Big Ox, you're a coach, and you can appreciate when a team is running offense, there's aspects in your offense that you don't use. Like, you might have a cutter cutting down the lane, and you might miss them once. Mm -hmm. That bit, Or you might have a big dive into the rim, and you might miss them once. But if that's going on on the regular, that's a part of your offense that you are not utilizing. That can make your offense even better. Mm-hmm. Minnesota does a terrible job in utilizing Rudy in that offense. I, I counted six more buckets that they could have had. That's just off Rudy diving to the rim. Six more buckets that they could have had where he was wide open. And I'm not even talking about guys like Magic or Stockton. I'm talking about just a good guard, even um, Mike Conley or Anthony Edwards, who's getting the ball swung to him and looking this guy off in the corner and firing it into Rudy. You can do that, but he didn't. Mm-hmm. Instead, he's getting it to the corner. Rudy's wide open underneath the basket. And I'm thinking to myself, because he missed him. He, they, he missed him five times. That's just the five times he missed him. That's not including the five times he's actually, he actually hit him. I'm thinking to myself, if you added more of this to your offense, you know how much, how much, how much more open space you would have on the wing because I, I, gotta, now, I, I gotta ask this question real quick, Chilltown. Just in all fairness, mm-hmm. when Rudy's open, when Rudy's flashing to the rim, or when Rudy's already under the rim, deep post position, these instances you're talking about, is he calling for the ball? Are his hands up? Is he giving the target? Is he like, yo, is he, you know what I mean? Like, or is because that's that was the criticism I had for uh, Victor Wimbanyama earlier mm-hmm. in the season when he wasn't getting the ball. I'm, I was saying he was cutting through the lane with his hands down. Mm-hmm. I, I don't you you don't have the right to get upset to me as a big man if I'm a guard if you're not getting the ball but you're not giving me a target you're not giving me a target your hands are at your knees I don't know what you you know I'm, are you ready for the ball you know what I mean sure. so that's that's the only sure. question I have about Rudy Go, Rudy Gobert in these instances is he calling for it as a as a guard playing with a big man I'm not giving you the basketball unless you want it I'm not right. doing that mm-hmm. Even, I don't care how wide open you are Un- until you show me that you want the basketball I'm not giving you the ball. Mm-hmm. I'm watching Rudy dive to the basketball. Big Ox, you just brought up a point. There isn't anybody bigger in the lane. Every time Rudy is diving to the ball, his hands are here. 
He's making a target. He's asking for the basketball. He's sitting in the lane. He's even clapping his hands, and he's asking for the ball, and they're still missing him. He even dives right to the rim. And I'm thinking to myself, again, Big Ox, I counted five times that he was missed yesterday, five right. of them. And I'm right. thinking to myself, in addition to those times that they actually saw him, if you could hit him half those times, your offense would be so much more potent. I'm not sure why their coaching staff isn't making – is it making that a point of emphasis to hit Rudy? Because Joker is trailing him. With Joker trailing him, Joker's telling me, yeah, we ain't really worried about him. We'll eat mm -hmm. his six points. We'll eat his eight points. Well, a guy who's shooting almost 60% from the floor who can score around the rim, Rudy isn't a liability, and he can shoot free throws. I think, Rudy, I think Rudy's over 60% at the strike. So if a guy like that, if you utilize him more in your offense, that makes life a lot less difficult for Mike Conley. That makes life a lot less difficult for Anthony Edwards, all of those guys. And on top of that, Big Ox, guess what? Guess what Rudy's going to do when you when you when you utilize him like that? He's going to rebound he's more. Yep. Yeah. He's, he's going to rebound more. On both ends. He's going to rebound more. He's going to rim protect more. He's going to paint. He's going to be a paint presence more. You utilizing him more, he's going to run the floor more. And that's going to make your crew a better crew. I'm surprised that the Minnesota Timberwolves haven't utilized Rudy more than they have because a lot of times I see him diving to the basket. He's wide open. And it's not difficult reads, to be honest with you, Big Ox. You'll see guys where you're like, man, I don't know if you can make that read. On the pro level, on the pro level, when I see Rudy flash into the basket, and like you just mentioned, he's getting big. I'm open. Well, in the process of him getting big, I can look this guy off in the corner because I already know you think I'm going there. Bam, fire it right into Rudy. And he's mm -hmm. wide open. Wide open. I, I, I want Anthony Edwards and Rudy Gobert and Coach Finch and, and everybody. I want I want well, the shooters. I, I want I want partic particularly Anthony Edwards, Rudy Gobert, and Coach Finch to go sit down and actually watch some James Harden film. James this Harden. Is just, Isn't just, it? just on, the, just on the attack in the paint, the Clint Capella lob threat. I need, I need Anthony Edwards and Rudy Gobert to get that in there too, man. They get that in their two man game together. That's gonna open up so much for them. That that situation with, that Houston used to have when they used to do that used to infuriate me. I'm just like, somebody stop this. But I'm looking yeah. at it. And I'm like, how do you stop that when you got a shooter over here? You got a shooter up here, and my big man. At any minute, I could just put it right there. Go get it. But big man's moving, ready for it. Guard the guard. We already, we already got this understanding. See, I'm, I'm sure that – see, we know that that's not on accident. That is a part of the play. So that's right. what I'm saying. We we don't need to have accidental lob threats. Make it a point to put this lob threat in your offense. Why? Because Anthony Edwards is a threat to the rim. Even right. more of a threat, I think, than James Harden was at that time, just with his athleticism ability to get over the rim. So mm -hmm. we – I mean, Rudy Gobert is equal to the same, if not more of a lob threat than Clint Capella was at that time. He's bigger, longer, just as just just as athletic. So right. I need to see some of that in Minnesota. I, I feel like Minnesota should be their goal should be to get Rudy a very, very efficient 18, 20 points a game. Just by diving, be. lob threats, offensive rebounds. I mean, big ox, what you just said is exactly that. He should be a he should be a 16 to 18 a game guy. He should easily be that. You just mentioned James Harden and Clint Capella. There's a reason why Clint Capella dove to the basket like he dove. He didn't just dive to the basket to attract the defense. He knew James Harden was looking for him, so he dives harder. He knew James Harden was going to get him the basketball at the rim, so he went harder. And it's not a coincidence that when he was doing that, I think Clint Capella was a double-digit rebound, which mm -hmm. means he played harder on the defensive end, right? I think he was a two-block-a-game guy which means he played harder on the defensive end. I don't think these guys in Minnesota utilize Rudy Gobert offensively nearly as much. I think people mis I think people misunderstand offense in terms of utilizing a guy with giving a guy the basketball and letting him go one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, Rudy isn't the guy that I'm dumping the ball into like Olajuwon, Moses Malone, Jabbar, Shaq, something like that. No, he's not that type of guy. What he is, though, is he is a guy who's very efficient around the basket. He's great in the mid post. He's great around the rim. If I'm not utilizing him like that, I'm doing a disservice to my unit because he makes us so much better offensively. And again, Big Ox, five times, five times I counted yesterday that they missed him, that he was wide open. If you put more of that in your game, you guys are going to be really difficult to beat. Is, really is that difficult. some? Is that something that you went into the game looking to 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 track, or just kind of noticed it? 
I did that specifically watching Rudy dive into the basket and thinking to myself, why don't these guys go to him more? And I'm mm -hmm. trying to figure out what the problem is. And I know that there's a lot of people who will say, well, Rudy's hands are good. So let's just say for the sake of argument, if he dives to the rim and 10 times he dives to the rim, let's say twice he fumbles it. But the other eight times, he either gets a bucket or he's going to the free throw line. What am I doing? I'm still going to him because he's still very efficient. If he misses, if he misses two or three layups, that still keeps the defense on edge. That still keeps the defense honest, as opposed to I don't go to him at all. I'm basically letting the defense off the hook when I do that. Right. And I brought up that James Harden Clint Capella thing, but a lot of it has to do with um uh, Anthony Edwards. Is is Anthony Edwards the threat coming off that screen that James Harden was? Because at that time, you know, you couldn't come, you couldn't go under a screen with James Harden. You had to fight, you had to trail. So that put the defense in that precarious position to where, okay, now I'm attacking the rim and I got my big rolling. So if Anthony Edwards can prove that he can shoot the ball good enough, then they mm -hmm. can really add that into their offense. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think that's something that you need, especially without Cat, because Cat was that other 20 plus. That you're gonna, you know, you're gonna get. So now we got to open up other things. It's, I think it's possible. And I, I mean, I'm on record. The day I found out, and got, I mean, Cat got hurt. I think Minnesota can still contend. I don't know. I won't argue that. So, and Rodell, just so you know, Rudy Gobert shoots around 65% from the strike. That's not, that's not terrible. In fact, that's pretty good for a big. I think Tim Duncan, I think Tim Duncan shot around 69% from the free throw line. So, if you got a guy that's that's that efficient around the rim. He's shooting 65% uh, from the floor. When you got a guy that's shooting that well from the floor, there's no reason why you shouldn't go to him more, especially when he's open. I think you're doing a disservice when you're not doing it. Yeah. Um, let me let, – before we get into the lobby, uh, before we get into the title, let's talk about what we got last night. I think last night was an exciting night of basketball. Clint, I'm, I'm thinking about Clint Capella. <laughs> Victor Wimbenyama uh, had a heck of a night, and so did another another young fella in uh, New York. So I was thinking about you, Big Ox, when this game came on. When, when, when <laughs> I saw this game, I was, I was immediately thinking about you because what you told me yesterday was, "Chill." I think that Jalen Brunson, offensively, he could carry. If I could get 16 to 18 from three or four more guys. Now, don't get me wrong, big ox. I ain't expecting sixty. Okay, sure. <laughs> right. I'm not, I ain't. I'm not. I'm not ridiculous enough to think that he gonna give me sixty. But right. if I could get twenty nine to thirty plus lockdown defense and another sixteen to eighteen from four of the guys, right? And we're gonna be difficult to beat. We are going to yeah. be difficult to beat. Yes, the we way, are. The way they play defense. Initially, when you said that to me, really, really quickly. I'm sorry if I cut mm -hmm. you off, but. When you when when initially when you said that to me when you said four guys averaging sixteen I'm thinking to myself that's not good but then it clicked in my head I'm thinking chill the Detroit Pistons they ain't had nobody averaging twenty what are you talking about mm -hmm. in two thousand four they had nobody averaging twenty their team was predicated on defense right. that's what it was and, right. and Chauncey Billups was a bucket getter they involved Richard Hamilton but the defense was what was predicated on them winning and that's right. who the Knicks are. That's exactly who the Knicks are. And if you could get – if I could get 28 in the playoffs from Jalen Brunson and another 18 to 20 from Julius Randle and 14 to 16 from four of the guys, man, please, good luck. I think they can do that too. <laughs> I good think luck. they can do that. OG, uh, Dante DiVincenzo, and most importantly, Chill, like I said yesterday, which I'm very excited about, Mitchell Robinson is back. Now, I don't think he's coming back like he left, mm. but – you know, by by the middle by the middle of April, he might be back in full stride. We might be at ninety percent. So now I'm not know. a and 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 I know I, I was thinking about what you said yesterday because I mean I I see the bucket getter that he is. I'm not a big fan of guards who shoot a lot, especially lead guards. I'm not a big fan of that because I've always felt like a big a, a lead guard that shoots a lot. You don't get your other guys involved and because you don't get your other guys involved. You leave the offense stacked. Plus, those guys don't do the other stuff on the defensive end if you don't involve them in, on the offensive end of the floor. They kind of get stagnant on that end of the, end of the floor. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, he's also one of those guards that he can get whatever he wants whenever he wants. And that can open up the offense for those other guys. And he's, been, he's actually been a better passer this year. But it's interesting that we talk about him and 
it kind of it kind of got scoffed over, you know, that you know, Rudy went 40 and 20 last night. I mean, Wimby went 40 and 20. When he went 40 and 20 last night. And, and nobody seven. said a word. And seven blocks. Was it oh was it seven blocks or seven assists? It was seven blocks? Seven assists. No, seven assists. Okay, okay. Seven assists. Seven, seven assists. Seven assists. I mean, well, for him, that's 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 crazy. 40 20 and seven. Yes. And they won too. And they won. Yeah, right. And it does. Do you I mean, know how I, many blocks he had though? I don't. I, I do know he has seven assists. I can tell you right now, Big Ox. I, I'm 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 confident that he had more than one. I, I do know that. I'll tell you right now, he went 40, 20. Yeah, he went 40, 20. He only had one block. Yeah, he only had one block last night. Yep. I, mm -hmm. I, I will admit, <clears throat> I will admit right now that I didn't I didn't watch the game, so I don't know what mm -hmm. it looked like from Jalen Brunson or Wimby. Like like I said earlier, I'm hundred percent college basketball right now, so I didn't see any any NBA last night. But <clears throat> I did see a couple of highlights. I saw the, I saw the score under. I was mm -hmm. like 40, 20, and seven. Like okay, mm -hmm. he's ending this season, letting people know y'all better get y'all better put some work in this summer because it's on next year. Well, he's, he's doing, doing he's doing exactly what you said, Big Ox. He's doing exactly what you said. One, he's showing a bigger target around the rim, mm -hmm. and with him showing a bigger target around the rim. You was preaching this to me earlier in the year. Chill. Okay, we could talk about the skill level. We could talk about all of that. But when I'm seven and a half feet tall, it ain't that difficult if I'm a big target to get me to basketball. You was right. preaching that all season long. Right. That's what he's been doing a lot more of. They mm -hmm. haven't gotten him the ball nearly as much as they should, but they were getting it. They were they made up, they made a conscious effort to get it to him last night. Right. I I don't know, man. I'm I'm worried about I'm worried about the league next year. Zion Zion slimming down, getting healthy. I, I hope he has a hell of an offseason, staying in shape, getting even better. Wimby's gonna get stronger. Oh man, <laughs> you said it yourself, Big Ox. With, with, with the owner of the of the of the, of the New Orleans Pelicans, she got all of them. She got all them food spots on speed dial. If he show up here, man, if he show up in your spot, turn him away. You better if, I, right if I find out you serve Zion Williamson some <laughs> food in here, we shutting you down. <laughs> we, we, we shutting the door on you. Does, keep him does. out of your establishment. <laughs> you, I need you I to keep care. him out of your establishment. No, because they some, you killing us. That gumbo is screwing us up. Can't sometimes that, you got to do what you got to do, man. I'm, yeah, I mean, yeah. you got to keep him out of there. But <clears throat> so what? Jalen had 68? 60, 60, 60, 60, 60 solid. Not 68, 60. yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. He had a straight 60 last night. And um, like I said, I'm not a I'm I'm not a big fan of, of, of guards who shoot a lot because I feel like you know you take you take your guys out of the offense, but he had it going. He did. Right. He had it, he had it going last night. And when you got going, when you get going like that, it's pretty difficult to deal with guy with a guy like that when you get it going. And you know, Mitchell Robinson came in and gave him some good minutes. Mm -hmm. He does he he still looked a little rusty, mm -hmm. like he wasn't finishing around the rim. Right? He wasn't he wasn't finishing around the rim like like he did early in the season before he got hurt. And I think that's largely due to him not seeing any game action. Right. But also, you know, guys like your man Boyan, Big Ock, he got to shoot the ball better. Yeah. One of, his, one, of, one, of, one of the main reasons why you're here, <clears throat> one of the main reasons why you're here is to shoot the basketball. And I feel like with J don't get me wrong, Jalen has a tendency in that offense to stagnate the offense. But he also can get guys open looks. And there was a stretch. There was a, there was a shot in the third quarter where Boyard had a wide open look in the corner where Jalen dives to the rim and pops it out to him. Now, some would say, well, he hadn't touched the ball in two trips. Sure. But as a shooter, you always have to be ready. As a shooter, you always have to be ready to shoot. And he wasn't in that particular situation. So I feel like Boyard always has to be ready to shoot. And if he could do his job, I think that those guys going to be a lot to deal with. A lot. Yeah, I I typically like <clears throat> I typically don't like a, a shooting guard. That's you know that's the point guard just coming down jacking, you know whenever. I typically don't like that either. But in this instance, I'm just looking at how the team was constructed, yep. and I'm 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 fine with you know forty percent of the possessions or you know Jalen Brunson getting getting shots off attacking, but. In order for them to play like that, they got to keep playing defense like they do and speed it up a bit. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. get that ball moving quick and, and try to get some buckets in transition. Um, Like, with OG, you know, running and Josh Hart, guys like that really getting out in the open court. I mm -hmm. think I think they can continue to play at this style. I mean, I'm, I'm convinced. 
I'm convinced. And, and you, when you look at Jalen Brunson, he just got that killer. He, he got, he's one of those players you can see it in him. Like, nah, he's a killer. He, he's yeah. really, he's really out here for one thing. He's out here for one thing. So <laughs> it's he'll shoot, he'll shoot anything. Chill. And for the most part, when I'm watching him at first, I'm just like, man, please stop this. But he keeps making it. So I'm just like, I just, hey. I, I, I just feel like this unit, it's a Tibbs unit, and the way that they play defense is going to take them far. As long as Julius Randle buys into what they're doing, and I mean, I, I, again, I don't feel like I need 26 or 28. If I could get that from him on an efficient 28, which isn't likely, but if I could get nights like that from him, I'll take it. I will mm -hmm. definitely take it, 100%. But if I could get 18 to 20 on seven for 13 from the floor and, you know, pretty solid from the strike, plus another 14 to 16 from three other guys, the Knicks going to be hard to deal with in the playoffs, yeah. B. Yes, They're going to be hard yes, to sir. deal with. Hard to deal with. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, y'all, hold, hold tight, Lobby. I'm getting to y'all in a couple seconds. We're just going over the games from last night. Yep. Um Chill. Was any other what was any other games last night? Did you, did you see I, 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 I particularly paid attention to your boys last night. I wanted to see how y'all came out against. <laughs> I, now here's the thing, Big Ox, because I know that this isn't. It's not like Ugh, because I actually like the effort that I saw from you guys last night. From three for three quarters, I saw the effort that you guys put in. It was that fourth quarter where you couldn't just you couldn't get anything going. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that really kind of slowed you up was Derrick Jones Jr. with the pickup point on Fox. Yeah. Getting the ball out of Fox's hands, slowing down your offense, which now stagnated your offense. I was like, okay, I, I like that from a defensive standpoint. That's an adjustment from Jason Kidd. Right. And all that up to the fact that, and you guys are going to kill me for this, guys, less is more. Just so you know, Luca only shot the ball 14 times last night. That's it. 14 shots. When Luca shoots the ball, I think if he, when he shoots the ball 16 times or less this season, they got a winning record. Just so you guys know, when he shoots the ball 16 times or less, they have a winning record. That's because he's getting other guys involved. That's because the ball doesn't stick to his hands. That's because other guys are involved in the action. That's because the action isn't slowed down. I still don't like what I see from him on defense. Yeah, I, I, I still don't like what I see from him on defense because he does – die after after he gets beat there there isn't, there isn't much of a recovery because i see him you know when he gets matched up on fox and he's not even giving me effort to even put a hand up when fox gives him one move he just wants to get back to the basketball which still bothers me it still burns me but even with that being said when his numbers are down in terms of shots in terms of shots those other guys those other guys get involved a lot more last night when i'm watching luca I thought Sacramento early. I thought you guys did a good job in getting the ball out of his hands, which that enhances the other guys, right? So when 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 Sacramento was blitzing Luca to get the ball out of his hands, that's forcing other guys to make plays who can make plays. That's forcing Herb to make plays. That's forcing Derek Jones to make plays. Oh, yeah. that's, that's forcing that's forcing Herb. That's forcing Derek Jones. That's forcing um, Gafford. That's forcing these guys to make plays. And when he done when when, when those guys do that. I think that that makes them so much more viable as opposed to when Luca is shooting as much as he does. I think that's a, I, I, I feel like that's a formula for success for the Dallas Mavericks when he doesn't shoot that much. Kyrie and Luca are those two guys that you just hate to like. Mm. Who just like, man, I, y'all just cold ballers. Like just dudes that when, when you got the ball in their, in their hands, you just want the ball to disappear. Like, please, Ball, go somewhere else. I don't want these dudes to have the ball. Abby, oh. I got a question for oh, you, Abby. How, how, <laughs> I don't know what to say about how, that. How is Luca shooting the ball 16 times or less and the Dallas Mavericks having a winning record of pointless, convenient stat? You guys are better when he doesn't shoot the ball 25 times a game. What are you talking about? How is that pointless? That's not. It's really, And on top of that, it's not really a negative stat. Two right. at all. I, I think I think when you said that a lot of Mavs fans took that personal, and it's not like it's not saying that saying that Luca shouldn't shoot twenty five shots isn't uh you know like a foul at Luca. That's saying Luca, you're you're good at facilitating when you focus on facilitating. When you're trying to just score, but then you're forced to be a grenade launcher, that's not good for your team. When you either score the ball or move the ball quick, 
it's good for your team. It's nothing wrong so, with saying that. So if the if the if the Sacramento Kings are blitzing Luca, right? Let's just say for the sake of argument that was true, which you guys were doing last night, big guys. The Sacramento Kings are blitzing Luca. So instead of Luca getting off the ball in a double, he's gonna hold on to the ball and he's gonna keep shooting. And in the process of him shooting, he'll go for 38 and nine and 11 rebounds. And you be and you'll say, Well, what else could he do? Well, how about he get off the basketball when he gets double teamed? How about that? Which he did last night. And coincidentally, they won. They end up winning. I mean, I, I don't think it's a bad idea when a guy is getting double teamed to pass the ball. Because if you get double teamed, Big Ox, and Big Ox, you are the epitome of logic. You are the epitome. You are the epitome of one, two, three. Big Ox, if somebody's double, what does that mean? Somebody's open. Somebody open. That means somebody's open, which means get off the ball. Pass it, please. Get off the basketball. It's not that <laughs> difficult. This is not. This is very simple. You get double team. That means somebody is open. Pass the ball. Right. Um, and once again, I, I want to mention that even myself, the diehard Kings fan I am, mm-hmm. for, forgot the game was on because I'm so so caught up in uh, in March Madness. Mm-hmm. I didn't even watch. So I, after I, after it clicked at like nine thirty, I'm like, oh damn, I'm missing. You know. I went over there, saw saw we lost. I think by six. I can't remember what it was what, three, like what it was three or something like that. Oh, three. Okay. So mm-hmm. what what was the vibe of the game though? Chill. Was it was it clear from the from the get go? Okay, uh, Mavericks kind of had a handle on it, or how was it looking? Mm-hmm. Okay. Actually, you guys had a handle on it from the beginning. I mean, you you outscored them by eight in the first quarter. Um, you basically were getting whatever you wanted early. Um, mm-hmm. The fact that you were blitzing Luca. Getting Luca off the ball, making him make, making him, making those other guys make plays. It was working, mm-hmm. and I mean those guys were making plays, but then their defense turned up in the fourth quarter. Okay, and so one of, the, one, one of the adjustments that they made, they were they they were doing this throughout the throughout the course of the game with Derek Fox picking pick the pickup point with Derek Fox and and De'Aaron Fox and um, Derek Jones Jr. The pickup mm-hmm. point was a lot, it was a lot closer, but they made a point to slow down De'Aaron Fox in the fourth quarter. They made a right. point to do that. And so so what I'm getting at is because I I have a, I've been having a lot of criticism for De'Aaron Fox this whole entire season. I haven't been mm-hmm. letting him slide with much at all. How did De'Aaron respond to that? I don't look at Derrick Jones Jr. as the type of guy that's supposed to halter just halt our offense. Like he just has us alter everything. He's Derrick Jones Jr. does not look he's he's never been the guy to me that that looks like okay, he's gonna make us audible our whole defense. So okay. is is De'Aaron Fox not being the point guard that the Sacramento Kings need him to be? Uh, I see somebody say we we're up by fifteen at some point. De- De'Aaron Fox, I put that type of stuff on point guards. Like you got to have, you got to set the tempo, you got to control the pace. You can't keep losing games that you're up. Is, well, is, is what, that a fair criticism or it is a fair criticism, one hundred percent. So last night, one of the things that they did was they made it a, they they made a, a conscious effort to slow down De'Aaron Fox, which is make the pickup point high. Well, instead of De'Aaron getting other guys involved, which is what Luca did, he made it in that he made an effort to get downhill more and try to score more. Now, mm-hmm. Derek Jones Jr., who has six seven, is a big body, mm-hmm. was basically hounding him. Now, the offense, as you know, runs runs through Sabonis. So the fact that Sabonis wasn't really involved as much as he should have been, because that's how your offense runs when you run an action off Sabonis. That's what that that wasn't going on. It was almost like De'Aaron took that one-on-one challenge as his own and said, "I right, I'm going to outplay there. I'm, I'm not going to let Derrick Jones Jr. slow me down. And it kind of took away from what you guys were doing, because okay. what you guys were doing, it was working. Moving the basketball, getting everybody involved, it was working. Jeez, I know one thing. I I don't have to watch the game to know that we really miss Trey Lyles. So mm-hmm. don't got to watch to know that. Um, what was there any other games last night? Who else played last night? It, it, it was it, we had a we had a full slate last night, Big Ox. I watched uh I watched Oklahoma City smoke Phoenix with no wow. shade. Yeah, smoked wow. them last night with no shade. Um. I'm they, sure. I, I, it looks like I really caught that one wrong. Mm-hmm. They 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 smoked them with no shade. They sped the game up. Not only did they speed the game up, they got on the glass. They were doing a great job in holding Phoenix to one shot. Um, I thought they did a good job in 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 guarding the long ball line. I thought they did a good job in in guarding Grayson Allen and guarding Eric Gordon. Um, 
It was almost like they was going to live with it was almost it was almost like they were going to live with Bradley Beal shooting shooting the long ball. Him getting downhill like Case and Wallace wasn't trying to hear it, right? Their perimeter players, they weren't trying to hear. It. I don't give J Dub nearly as much credit as I should, man. I really don't. And I think one of the main reasons why is cuz he's a second year player, but he just looks so much more polished. He looks more he looks so much more confident. And the reason why is because the offense that they play in, he's not in a position where he's hampered. They give him the ball. They run a lot of stuff for him where they turn him loose. They run a lot of action, a lot of pin down action, and not just pin down action in the half court. I'm talking about when he gets the ball off the glass, he gets to go with it. And he gets to monitor the floor. And if he sees an open shot, take it. If you see somebody open, then go with that. But for the most part, just play your game. One of the things, and and I, I made a, I made an effort, I made a conscious effort to, to mention this. Whenever I watch J Dub, he reminds me of a more athletic version of Jamal Mashburn. Every time I, mm. a little bit smaller, but that's who he looks like to me. Mm. A more a smaller, more athletic version of Jamal Mashburn. Big body, beats up on the defense, especially when he gets smaller guys on him. Gets downhill, could finish at the rim with the best of them. He was doing the best he could to get KD on him. He was doing the best that he could to get Booker on him because whenever he got those guys on him, he was making a beeline to the rim. He was not settling for jump shots. He was making a beeline. He was making a beeline right to the rim, and they couldn't really do anything with them. Add that right. to the fact that Chet, being the pick and pop big that he is, and not just being the pick and pop big he is in transition in their secondary game, that really helped them out because Phoenix was terrible last night in transition. They were absolutely awful last night in slowing Oklahoma City down in transition. They had no pickup point. Whenever they, when, whenever Oklahoma City got the rebound, they didn't get back. In, they didn't get back in transition. So I thought that I thought that Oklahoma City did a great job in dealing with Phoenix last night. A great job. Yeah, man. Okay, see, J Dub's a hell of a player. I like the uh, yes, Jamal Mastron shot. Mm -hmm. Mastron was cold, y'all. <laughs> As ice. <laughs> as ice he was yes he was and that's who jay that's, that's who jay that reminds me of he got that smooth type of game but he also there's also a ruggedness about him where mm -hmm. he can play that way and that's kind of why that's that's a lot of the stuff that reminds me of mashburn when i watch him he's got that smooth game where he can where he can play in the mid-range and, and create space but he also gets downhill and beats up on whoever's covering i i, I definitely like that about him yeah no doubt Okay, we got another super chat from Joseph S. He said, Luca and Jokic are coaching nightmares. Leave them on ISO and they're torching defenders. Double blitz and they're dissecting the defense every time. What I'm doing with Luca is I want Luca to do everything. That's the only way you I feel like that's the way you beat Dallas. Keep the ball in Luca's hands. When you do what Sacramento did yesterday. I think that you put them in a different situation because I think Luca now when he gets doubled or when he gets blitzed, he'll get off the ball and he'll make different reads. I mean, you just talked about this big ox when you doubled somebody's wide open. So they'll make adjustments like they did last night. They were blitzing, which I still didn't understand. They were blitzing Luca. As soon as he crossed half court. Okay. I get that part, but you don't blitz Luca. You don't, you don't blitz Luca. 32 feet away from the basket when you're in a secondary break you don't, or, or when you're in transition. When yeah. you're in the offense and Luca's crossing half court, when you're in half court and he's coming to the he, – he's in the short corner, I can appreciate you blitzing him because now the court – the floor is, isn't the, – the, the floor is now shrunk when you, when you now blitz him because now you don't – his vision, he can't see all the way over there when you're blitzing him. He, he, can see, he can see across half court or he can see in the corner. But you shrink the court when you blitz him in that area. When you blitz him when he's crossing half court in the middle of the floor, well, he can see the whole floor. Hmm. And when he sees the whole floor, he's a lot more dangerous. Yeah. So if I'm if 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 I'm if I'm coaching against Dallas, I want the ball in Luca's hands. I want Luca to do everything. And what I mean when I say I want Luca to do everything, I want him to score. Because I know when he scores, that means the other guys aren't really involved that much. Right, right. Okay. Well, it's about that time we get down to the lobby. Let's see who's back here. First up, we got Shepard Sounds. What's up, Shep? What up? Yo, yo, yo. what's going what on, up? guys? What up? How was your week? Good. It was great. Yes, you, yes. Yeah, um, it was great. 
Yeah. Um, you know, I just want to talk about a couple things. First off, um, yeah, man, them them OKC Thunder, they got three legitimate 20 point per game scores. Like legit. Like they can they can all three average over 25. Who and are we that's talking the thing. about? What three? Oh, oh um J Dub, Chet, and SGA. Chet and recently Oh, Shay, Shay's averaging 30, but I'm saying like on a basis. Oh no, Chet. I said Chet. Oh, oh yeah, no, Chet can average. No, can. Chet can average 25. I, 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 that's that's very doable for him. But the X factor in these games, while he's been out, Josh Giddy, bro, Josh Giddy been hooping, and I ain't a Josh Giddy fan. Okay, this dude on like since SGA's been out, he's been averaging like 25, seven and five or something, mm -hmm. and shooting threes. That's the main thing because they're putting the ball in his hands and asking him to facilitate the offense. If they do that in the playoffs, I think that they'll be even better. Because now, since he has the ball in his hands, you have shooting everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, who are you going to leave open? You're probably going to leave open SGA. But SGA in the open for an open three is cash. So that's my thing with them. It's like Giddy just added a whole new dimension to the team stepping up. That's well, that's the thing I noticed. I I, I think <laughs> what, I, I think that, I think Josh Giddy recognizes what his game is. And mm -hmm. if we remember when he came over from Australia. He was a league guard. That was his game. He played at the top with the ball. So this isn't foreign for him to grab the ball off the glass and go with it. Now, like last night when I saw Big Ox, I saw him keep the defense honest. I ain't even talking about with the long ball. He only shot three long balls last night. But what he did do was he got in the mid-range. He did do that. He definitely got in the mid-range and kept that team, kept, kept Phoenix honest. I keep telling you dudes, stop loving the long ball as much as you love the mid-range. The reason why is because the mid-range opens up the long ball. Not only does the mid-range open up the long ball, the mid-range opens up box work too. And when Josh Kitty did that, guess what else he did? He opened up the game for Chet. Yeah. Now Chet is on the block and Chet is doing what he's doing. So I don't ex I, I don't think Chet I don't think Josh Giddy has to crack the long ball like I don't know Luca or or, oh. or the best of them in the NBA. But as long as he can keep the defense honest, which is what he did last night, they're gonna be a problem. If he can shoot like for a game and average like two, like one to two, I think he'll be fine because most of those are going to be open. That's what the defense is going to give him. Yeah. Um, and another thing, um, first of all, I just want to say shout out to the Kings, bro. That was an absolute war last night. Like, Ox, you didn't see it. You need to watch that. I mean, that was a war, bro. Like, I, that felt like like real playoff basketball. Like, I'm not going to lie. The Kings was locking up Luka in the first half. Like straight up, and I can't even say nothing because our first three plays, because what they did was the adjustment they made was they took away the short move. Mm -hmm. So that's why all of like if you see the stats, like yeah, our bigs had good games, but if you watched them, it was a lot of fumbling, a lot of turnovers, a lot of Luca actually forcing passes last night, which I thought was a I thought okay, like some I thought he wasn't as aggressive, but Obviously, he's been banged up. He had his knee bleed during the game, got that wrapped up. He banged on the floor, and I feel bad. Oh, Ox, I don't know if you heard this. Malik Monk is out. Um, he got hurt. He went. Uh, Luca went up for a layup and landed on his knee, and they said he might have either a grade one or a grade two MCL sprain. So all right, that's prayers. Be all right. MCL yeah. sprain. He'll be back. He'll be back in three weeks. Yeah, pray, prayers up for him though. That was that was just an unfortunate one, but man, that nigga Kyrie, bro. Oh my! Oh, like, right now. bro, Kyrie shot one hundred percent in the fourth quarter. He didn't miss a shot. He didn't miss. <laughs> Yo, have I have I explained to you how much I like Kyrie Irving? How much Kyrie Irving reminds me? Kyrie Irving is the closest thing to Kobe Bryant. These other dudes be trying mm -hmm. to oh, it's Kobe, this mamba mentality. Kyrie Irving is the close. If, if he was six six, oh <laughs> <laughs> man, that that. That dude, oh, and I, I don't know what's in, in another thing. Two more things. Shout out Dante Exum, bro. We, where would the Mavericks be without Dante Exum? This is no gas. He's our X factor. He, he was um before last night. I think he was six of six on clutch threes this season. He missed one last night. He drove to the rim, missed the layup, and then made the three to ice it. And like just seeing everyone's reaction, I was like, everyone's playing for each other. Everyone's selfless. Like Chill said, I, I love that point, actually, that we can actually win games when Luka takes less shots. I like that. But at the same time, when it's like the first half and P.J. Washington is cold, like missed like five shots, five threes in the first 
half and doing all that, it's real tough. But I like that he was on defense. He's rebounding. That's the main thing. Because he's he's getting on boards. That's one thing I didn't expect from PJ. PJ, I mean, PJ, I, I, PJ I, I, I think God. how many times, how many times am I gonna watch Tim Hardaway miss open shots before I snatch this? Bro, the, 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 yeah. Chill, I'm gonna, chill, with a chill. I'm, I'm trying to be cool, right? <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be cool. Big Ox, how many times I got to watch Luca get him butt naked looks? How many times I got to watch that, Big Ox, where Luca gets him butt naked looks? And and who, I don't mean just who else are they going? Who else? I don't gonna mean play for and I don't just game. mean but I don't, I don't just mean butt naked looks in transition. I mean they run stuff for him. Yeah. They run action for him, right? So if you as a scorer. When we run an action for you, that means we're looking for you. And how many times I got to watch this dude? Luca's got two guys on him, and the ball swings twice, and there's nobody within four feet of him, and he's missing wide open looks. I can't handle it, yo. I of 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 all the things, of 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 all the things that I can handle, like in football, for example, I can't handle false start. You know what the snap count is? You're goofy. Right, right. You know what the, you know what the snap count is? You're goofy. In pro basketball, you don't get a lot of open shots. I don't get a lot of open looks. So the open looks that I get, I got to knock down at least. I've, I've, I've always felt like you got to knock down 60% of your open looks. So if I get five shots, I got to knock down three of them. Open. Right. That's Because I'm not going to get, get a lot of open shots. So the fact that. So the fact that this dude, like last night, was a prime example. Luca gets down. Luca gets down the gut. Uh, all right, Chef. We're going to keep it moving, fam. Yep, he gets Listen. he he, he Luca Luca goes down the gut, swings it over to Irv, who then goes down the gut and pops it to Tim Hardaway, who is wide open and he misses. And I'm thinking to myself, give me a break, man. I can't handle it. I'm trying to I'm trying to be civil about it, but I can't. Yo. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I man, I don't know why I got such a soft spot for Tim Hardaway Jr. I've, I've been always been, was a fan of his, even when he was at Michigan. And I feel like at Michigan, at Michigan. It was Trey Lyles and my man, I'm not Trey Lyles, my man Trey Burke and uh and Tim Hardaway Jr. They got robbed by Louisville and pay they got robbed by the refs and Peyton Siva at Louisville. They stole that national championship from, from Michigan. I'm trying to tell y'all. I hope if, if y'all watch that game, y'all know what I'm talking about. That foul at the end, I believe they caught it on Trey Burke. He didn't even touch Peyton Siva. But let me let me stay focused. Let me stay focused. All right. Um a super chat from Joseph. S, he says, fair chill. Would that philosophy work on Jokic? It did, actually, last season. If you notice, the games that the Nuggets lost in the playoffs, like when Luka went 50 and I think he went 12 against Phoenix, they lost. When he had those games, 45, they lost. So the difference with Joker is Joker is actually a willing passer. Joker, Joker wants to get everybody involved before his offense. Mm -hmm. Even when he got his offense going, he's still looking for other people. So to, to scheme against Joker with making Joker score, that's not going to work because Joker is also looking for guys right from the beginning. So no. Mm. Okay. Um, Kilver says, what are the expectations for the Rockets next year? I think their success all comes down to a Jalen Green leap. I think that they could be – I think the Rockets could be this year's Oklahoma City and uh, last year's Sacramento. I think they could be them next year. I think that getting back, Sengun, I think Green's going to be better. I think Tari Eason is going to be better. I'm expecting Jabari Smith to take that leap. I really think that this team could really challenge for a Western I, – I really think that they could challenge for one of the top seeds in the Western Conference next year. I do. Okay. Um, I do. Yeah. I, my thing on, on that Super Chat was, uh, and you kind of touched on it, Chill. He said it, it's pretty much contingent on the Jalen Green leap. I don't yeah. think it's just Jalen Green leap. They got so many young players. Like, if all of them, if all of the young players just get a little bit better, um, if all of them improve on one key thing in their game and continue to get stronger and get their IQ up, watch the game, film and stuff like that, stay around the vets, stay in the uh stay in the gym with coach coach MA. That right there is gonna be a 
major increase. If if all their young players just get better at one thing and just you know like that, that's a, that's like a seven eight game jump. Uh, what you, you know? So 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 what's the what's the leap for Jalen Green that we're talking about here? Like when you say when when, when they say a leap, like what what are we talking about, y'all? Because he's he was twenty two a game last season, right? I think he's around that this year. I think he's around 20, 21 a game this year. What's the leap mm -hmm. we're looking for? Are we, are we looking for 24? Are we looking for 25 and 5? Um, what, what, what kind of leap are we talking about? Because what, what I'm not trying to hear is I'm not trying to hear him taking a leap to league MVP status. Right. Like that's asking right. a lot. Like you, 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 you're putting a lot on it for a dude in, I think, in year four to go from this to – you know, now he's in a league MVP conversation. So, so what? What is the leap? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking anywhere between, like, 22. Like, if he went from 22 to 25 next season, on good efficiency, and his mid range was a lot, his mid range was better, and his three ball was more respectable. I could get with that. I think the key to this is Jabari Smith taking that leap. Jabari mm -hmm. Smith turning into the all league defender that I think the the all league defender that I think he can be. If he took that leap, plus with Tari Eason, I definitely think that they can be better. Bro, I don't think I don't think Jalen Green's leap is in his points per game at all. To me, it's, it's not about his points per game because what's going on right now is happening without Singoon based on them, you know, changing it up a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I think so. So I think his leap has to be more in efficiency, knocking down open jump shots and scoring in the scoring in the paint, sc scoring through contact and stuff like that. Now, mm -hmm. I think that's where his efficiency has where his leap has to be. It has to be an efficiency. I don't I don't think they need Jalen Green to average 28, 29. I think a cool no, 24, you know, yeah. 23, 23, 24, 25. I think that's I think that's fine for Jalen Green as long as he's not mm -hmm. chucking and as long as he's playing defense. Um because when Sangoon gets back, he's you know he, he can handle a lot of things with uh, and they got a lot of pieces over there, so I don't think they need him to go average 30 or nothing like that. It's uh, it's about being efficient and being smart. And I still think, to your point, I still think that the offense needs to run through Singoon, but I do think that they need to get Jalen Green more involved in the offense and and and, right. and play to his strengths, which is playing in the mid range, you know, running more pin downs with him cracking the long ball, because that's what you do with a two guard, right? And I mm -hmm. feel like he has improved at that stuff. So I think that if he could take that next, if he could take that next step next season, I mean, sure, I think that they can definitely be a lot better. The question that I have. For the Rockets, because again, you hear Big Ox, you hear this, you hear the logic about him being or taking the next step. Well, like Jalen Green, okay, what, what is this year three that we're in now? Yeah, we're in year yeah. three. Mm -hmm. Like, what does Jalen Green look like in year six? Who is he in year six? Who is Jalen Green? Now, mind you, Big Ox, I remember you telling me what you thought about him coming out of high school. So, yeah. what does Jalen Green look like? We're in year six now with Jalen Green. What do you think he is? In year six, he's in year six. Jalen Green should should be the best shooting guard in the league. He should at that point. He should he should be averaging at that point. He should be averaging about twenty eight. You know, a solid twenty eight uh, contending. If especially on this team, Houston Rockets, he should be averaging a solid twenty eight contending for contending for the Western Conference for a championship. That's so, what Jalen Green should be in year six. He should be he should be battling and for the West. Like oh, Luca. Respect Luca. Uh, I think he should be he should, he should be battling those guys for for the West. I think I think that's where it comes. Like in in six years, I can or not six years in three in three years, I can see where it's it's all about Houston, Minnesota, Dallas, OKC. I can see where those those teams are kind of. Uh, now you got to keep these young cores together and build. Yep. Uh, maybe maybe I, I don't know where Minnesota will be with Cat and Rudy, but I can guarantee Houston. In OKC are going to be fighting. So oh, San Antonio, thank you, thank you. All San Antonio makes the proper proper moves. That the West is about to be hell, and I think I think Jalen Green could be at the forefront of that. He just has I to get, get stronger, that. has to get stronger, has to be efficient. I think it's going to be the Anthony Edwards Jalen Green show. I'm gonna love watching them play. Basically, all right. So we so we looking at Donovan Mitchell, Devin Booker 2.0. I can get with that. Yeah. All right. No chill. No. I better? Think Jalen, I think Jalen Green is better than that. Better, okay. I think Jalen Green's better than him. He's bigger. Uh -huh. He's a lot bigger than uh, than Donovan. He he's more athletic than Devin. Mm -hmm. I think he's. I, yeah, I, I think right. he's one of them. I think he's one of them. Chill. Okay. He just he just has to. And, and like Mars says a lot, 
those first two years, damn, they don't really count just based on the organization and what they had going on in Houston. They had now, no idea what they was doing in Houston. Yeah, you know no what I'm saying? Idea. No I, idea. I think, we, I think we can see uh, Houston actually going in the right direction now and using their – I think this is a his, this is his breakout year to find out, okay, I can finally play ball. Next year That's is going to be – I think next year is going to be a treat for everybody. That's let's get back. Go ahead, big guys. Go ahead. Let's, let's get back. Let's, let's do that. Okay, okay. Oh, well, actually, let me get this super chat first from uh, – you know, we never we never skip the super chats, y'all. No. RJ to God. What should my Hawks do moving forward? Because we seem to be stuck stuck at mid. Mm -hmm. I would hate to see Young go and go though, because he balls out in the playoffs. Hmm. Well, the problem is that when he balls out in the playoffs, who is it against? It's against the number one seed or it's against the number two seed. You, know? <laughs> yeah. you don't want to be that, right? You don't want to you 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 want to continuously be at the top of the East. Well, he balling out against the Boston Celtics because they're the ninth seed or they're the eighth seed. He's balling out against, I don't know, Philly because they're the two seed. Well, I think that it, it may be time to move on. It may be time to move on from these two because I see I see what De DeJounte Murray, I feel like DeJounte Murray is a, is a is a two guard. I don't think he's a lead guard, but I just don't think that him and him and him and him and Young just complement each other that well i think that those two guys there's a disconnect between them two and i feel like i feel like trey young would play better with a big guy than he would a a, a two guard like like dejounte murray yeah i want trey young to get to san antonio mm. i'm calling up i'm call i'm calling up chicago and i'm i'm, I'm checking i'm checking lonzo ball temperature i want to find out what's up with him Risky chill town. He hasn't, I know he hasn't it is. been able to run in two years. I love Lonzo That's Ball. Don't get me wrong. And I hope he continues to get opportunities. But if I was the GM, he's not getting an opportunity with me. If I yeah. and I, I mean I don't mean it to sound like that. It's just like we got Victor Wimanyama. We got to go with somebody that I know is gonna be on the court. We can't risk his, you know what I'm saying? Because they got a once in a lifetime player over there. Maybe I his guess. brother, though. Maybe, maybe, maybe Lamella. No. Mm -mm. No, he's not a good fit for him. No, I, I, even though even though Lamelo passes the ball, and mm -hmm. I just feel like Lonzo is better in the aspect that you know he defends, he does distribute when he's healthy. Yeah, the defending part is 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 what is what's moving me. But the fact that he defends, he's a solid distributor. He can knock down the long ball. He's a real good floor leader. Yeah. If he could, if 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 he could get healthy, I'm 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 calling up Chicago and I'm checking the temperature just to find out mm. what's the story with this dude. What, what what's yeah. going on? With I, I mean, I would love that because I I'm I've said a lot that I think Lamelo has more chance to be like a superstar in the NBA, yeah. but I believe Lonzo's gonna have before the injuries. I'm thinking Lonzo's gonna have a 15 year career. He's not, you know, what I'm saying he's one of them players you you need on your squad. Mm -hmm. uh, I like Lonzo a whole lot, so I hope he I hope he stays healthy. So yeah, I hope he gets healthy, get back on that court. We miss, we, we miss seeing Lonzo ball out there. Um, Andre one five seven eight nine says that's the story of T Tim Hardaway Jr. He is good for two weeks, then he sucks for two months. That's every year, and he had and he is bad on defense. Mavs should trade him when his tra should have traded him when his value was high. Sorry for my English. Sorry, don't worry about it. Andre. When was his value the highest though? When 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 was Tim Hardaway Jr.'s value the highest? I don't I don't I don't know if, if he's ever had. Had, had had great trade value. I mean, he's a he's a he's a D and three guy. He's like Grant Williams. He's one of those guys. So I mean, like, what do you, what do you think you're gonna get for him? So, I mean, I don't. I don't it's not like you're getting a franchise player for him. I don't, yeah. I don't know what you think you're gonna get for him. I have no idea. Um, but <laughs> we'll see. Let's get back to it. Who's in here? We got Red L. What up? Um, What's good, Chad? What's good, Ark? What up? What up? Yeah, we can hear you, man. I don't know. Your 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 signal might break up if we start hearing too much of Dallas Mavericks propaganda. Man, I'm just you know you know how, you know how it happens sometimes here, when you know how sometimes it happens when we get to talking about the propaganda and it's just like oh, oh what happened right there? Where are you going? I, I can't hear you. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. You were saying something. I, I can't hey, hey, you. that's fair. I'm not gonna be nasty. I'm not gonna be nasty. You know, the Kings played a really good game against the Mavericks. Very enjoyable. Very entertaining. I will say this, Ox. Bro, mm -hmm. Keon Ellis is the truth. Keon yeah. Ellis is the truth. I was watching him. I was like, bro, he's making every three, and he's playing amazing defense. And in the fourth quarter especially, they were running the offense. Well, 
they were initiating the offense with Keon Ellis instead of De'Aaron Fox to with DeMonte Sabonis and getting a lot of net, a, good, a lot of good threes as well. So I'm curious on your thoughts about your young guys, Keon Ellis and Kessler Edwards, because they were balling. They were the reason why the Mavs were struggling to get back in the game. So I'm curious on your thoughts on that. Uh, I like Keon. Um, I like Keon a lot. I um, I wish Coach Brown would play Davion a little more, though. Um, I, I do, but I do like Keon. I, I like them playing together. Uh, Kessler Edwards, he's cool, but I don't really see too much. I don't think – I don't see him playing too much, you know what I mean, especially when Trey Lowes is back and stuff like that, when Kevin Hurd is around. Ke- I don't think we have – I don't think we have room for Kessler. I like him. I, I do like the young fella, though, but I don't think we got room for Kessler. I hope we don't – I hope Keon sticks around for years to come because we need that energy. We need that defense. And he's not scared to shoot that ball. And when he's hot, he's hot. So I like Keon a lot. Riddell, what do you say about – Riddell, what do you say about your boys – Playing Derek Jones Jr. on playing Derek Jones Jr. on the Air Fox and the pickup point being higher in the fourth quarter. How you felt? How did you? How did you feel about that? I mean, for a while now, Derek Jones Jr. and Josh Green, but Josh Green's injured, has been yeah. the best POA defender on the team, and the fact that he's making threes better than he's ever had at any point in his career. Mm-hmm. has made him a liable threat to put him on the offense. In addition to that, since he's the POA defender, obviously he's playing against the, the lead guard. And when they get the rebound, he's going to be the first guy down the court for that quick transition offense as well. Right. So Derek Jones Jr. has been surprisingly amazing player for the Mavericks, and mm-hmm. I've been enjoying him. And having that lob threat and that slasher, other than just three-point shooters who just sit at the at the three-point line, he can slash and be a lob threat to Luka whenever, if people are falling asleep. He's been amazing for the team. I'll be honest. The Mavs, since that trade, I've been liking it with Gafford. He's been a dog. I've been loving Gafford. He's been amazing and lively. That center duo is way better than Dwight Powell because he was bad. He's been bad since last year, since actually forever, actually. My only thing with the Mavericks right now, is Tim Hardaway Jr. is really bad. Get Tim Hardaway off the floor. Get Hardaway <laughs> he off is the floor. Bad. I can't handle it. Get Hardaway off the floor. It's not that he's not – it's not only the fact that he's missing wide-open three-pointers, but he thinks he's that guy still, so he just takes a three-pointer when the guy's, like, right in his face. He just shoots it anyway. I'm like, why? Like, you can't even make a wide-open three-pointer. You think you could just shoot that? Yeah, Tim Hardaway Jr. has been bad. I hope when Josh Green comes back – I'm be honest, he loses all his minutes. And the Mavericks, I'm be honest, I'm ready. The Mavericks in the playoff are gonna be dangerous. Other than the Nuggets. What's your take? What's your take? Where where are y'all going? I, I need I need to hear something. See, I need the Nuggets to start winning games and get that two seed because I uh, I'm not trying to see that Mavericks Nuggets first round matchup. So they get the two seed or get the one seed. The Mavericks are beating the Timberwolves. The Mavericks are beating the Thunder. Mavericks are beating the Clippers. Mavericks are beating the Pelicans. Hey, WCF, that is the Mavericks right now. And based on how they played the Nuggets a couple weeks ago. I don't see them beating, I don't see them beating Minnesota. I don't. I don't oh, I see them. I don't see them beating Minnesota. Off the strength that Minnesota's defense is just stifling. That's number one. Number two, for them, to, and this has to be a coaching adjustment. I can't be the only one who sees this. Them using Rudy more than they do. Them using Rudy more than they do around the rim, that's going to affect their offense way more. I think that they handled Dallas. I don't think that they smoked them, but I think they handled Dallas. See, I would have agreed with you. Not handle, but I would have – well, you didn't say that. But I would have agreed with you before the trade. Gafford and Lively, in terms of that interior defense, have been some of the best in the NBA as of right now. Our interior defense has gotten so good. It's the reason why De'Aaron Fox struggled so much. Because, yes, they had Derrick Jones Jr. right in De'Aaron Fox from basically full court. But Fox was still able to get to the rim, but he wasn't able to get a good shot. Because Gafford and Lively were right there every single time. It was like Derrick Jones was sending them in there. That's what it looked like. It looked like Derrick Jones was just sending them in there. Oh, yes, exactly. He was picking them up, but then he just sent them in there because I got these big guys at the rim. So I already know what's going to happen. You think he was more so trying to defend just that pull up midi and like letting them yes. go to letting oh, them sure. go to the ramp for yes. Yeah, that's that's a really good defensive strategy. See, that's what I like to see. I like to see that in basketball. Well, yeah. big ox, that's why you that's why you back there. That's why you back there for rim protection. I'm 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 supposed to right. deal with this dude from here. I'm gonna send you into my big guy. I'll let you. Right. I'll let him deal with you. That's his job. Right. 
Right on. We appreciate you, Red L, pulling up. We got a full yes, lot. Keep it moving. No uh, worries, man. On Wednesday, man. Hey, good luck this season. Um, if y'all do get Dallas, I mean Denver, take care of business. <laughs> hey, man. Really, 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 what I need Dallas to do is get into that four seed and move the Pelicans to the five or the four. Get to the five and the Pelicans be the four. I need that matchup first round. Dallas, Dallas, and Pelicans. Rodell, he just want he want the Pelicans going. That's why, because he don't want nothing to do with them. That's his biggest problem. It's not Next. nothing to do with nobody else. He just want the Pelicans gone because he don't want to deal with them. Ingram That's better get healthy first. I need that oh. healthy Ingram yeah. first. But Luca MVP, y'all. Luca uh -oh. MVP. We here. Okay. All right, bro. Well, well, first before we get into that, let me get to these super chats because as as y'all know, we never skip the super chats. We do not Eddie Hart. Do you think no. San Antonio can swing a trade for Darius Garland depending on how Cavs postseason goes? Well, depending on, first of all, Darius Garland is a max player. He just signed a $192 million extension. So we got to make the money work. So you got a bunch of guys on rook deals. And the guys that's making real money on your crew, like Devin Vassell, you're going to have to give up dudes like that. And you're going to have to give up a lot to get Darius Garland. So I don't know, man. I think you might be asking for too much. Well, isn't that a, one of the reasons that gave? I mean, Devin Vassell, he's a, he's a really good young guy, young player, but isn't that the reason they gave him as much money as they could to make him uh, a, a trade asset and, and be able to match money? I think that they gave him that, though, because they're trying to build they, – they want him to be a part of what they're building. I don't think they really? did that because okay. they want to throw him into – throw him into a trade. No, nah, I don't think that. Okay. You don't, pay, you don't pay a guy that much because you want to later on move him for, for a better piece. That doesn't really make much sense to me. Right. Um, let me see. Another one from Winter says, Ox and Chill. I watched the Blazers last night against the Heat. Also, can y'all explain how everybody on the Blazers was a negative plus minus? Big Ox, I don't know if you saw this game. Just so you know, they beat the Blazers by 60. I just want to put that on your mind. Chill, they didn't beat them by 60. They beat them by 60. Smoked them dudes. Destroyed them. Yeah. <laughs> beat them dudes by 60. I'm, I'm not. Good, calling, I'm not. I'm not calling you no liar, none. Chill. Hold on. Let me pull this up. They beat you by sixty last night, yo. I'm good. I'm straight. Hold on, Hold on. Miami. Yes. <laughs> they beat them dudes by sixty last night. Portland Trailblazers didn't do anything. Nothing. Nothing was productive for them last night. <laughs> Whoa. No. They beat them by sixty. Big Ox, get out of here, 82 man. Eighty-two to one forty-two. What? Get Portland off the floor. Get oh. Portland off the floor. Get out of here. No, get way. Portland off the floor. I'm good. Wait a second. Wait a second. Yes, they smoked them dudes. They couldn't wow. do anything last night. They, they got, got 20 from Bam, 20 from Terry, 20 from Highsmith, 26 mm -hmm. from Thomas Bryant. Mm -hmm. This is incredible. I, it's, it's, wow, and, how did and, I not see and, this? And, and, and so we clear. I want to make sure we clear, Ox. That's not the first time this has happened. This is the second time this season that the Trailblazers have been smoked by 60. I don't know if you remember, <laughs> Oklahoma City, they came to town. Oklahoma City beat them by, yep, you guessed it, 60. Get in Portland. Oklahoma? In Oklahoma City. Get Portland. <laughs> Losing by 60 in the NBA is... This ain't the first time this happened this year. It's the kind. <laughs> these are the kind of games that get coaches fired and players traded. It's games like this. Like, we clearly ain't close to doing anything when you're getting smoked by 60 multiple times. We're not close to doing anything. We're not. Yeah, no, nah, Chauncey, I love you, Chauncey. You at, at one point, at one point, you was one of my favorite players in the league. I loved you, Chauncey. Come on, man. I can't in, in, in good in good faith. I can't just I can't defend this. I can't. Yeah, you know good. what I'm saying? I'm straight. Just straight hoop talk. I can't defend it, Chauncey. I'm yeah. sorry. You there's some some got to give another super chat from DSG Piccolo. Uh oh, this is a Portland Trailblazers fan, if I'm not mistaken. He says, it was a bad game all around. With all these damn injuries, we got a G League team out there. School had the worst plus minus in NBA history. I need a break. I don't really think the game was I really don't, man. Because I remember oh, the Trailblazers man. when they were competitive. And I don't talk, I ain't talking about the, the Damian Lillard Trailblazers. No, I ain't talking about them dudes. I'm talking about the when they was competing for the NBA championship. Them dudes. I remember them. Yeah. And to see Terry them, Porter, Clyde Drexler? Yes. And to see them dudes turn into this right here, it's like, like losing by 60 multiple times? No. Portland That's is a basketball city, yo. Yeah. Portland is a basketball city. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay, let me get back to the lobby real quick. We got uh 
Hey, Breezy. Um, let me see this. What up? Breezy, what up? Yo, y'all can hear me, right? Yep. You hot. What up? Yo, what's up? Hey, I got I got just a few points, right? First of all, Portland losing like that, crazy. That crazy. Oh. Um, <laughs> I wish I'm a Rockets I fan. Heard of that. I'm a Rockets fan. Not like Mars. I'm not a fake Rockets fan. I'm a real Rockets fan. You mean a front runner like Mars? The front runner that Mars is? That, Mars don't count. Now, Mars can watch more games than me. I, I got a job, clearly. You know what I'm saying? I don't have the yeah. time. But last night, watching that game, I mean, I almost shed a tear because the last few years what I went through watching this team, I mean, I'm talking like I didn't even want to watch, but I still sat there and watched the Rockets. You know what I'm saying? First of all, we never lost a game like that. People made it seem like the Rockets was like – as bad as how uh, Charlotte and um, what's the other team, Detroit and Washington. you know Washington, we we were never that bad. Right. I watched the I watched a lot of games last year. We would be competitive until like the last five minutes of a game and chill. That all the stuff you talk about, how you know, what I'm saying we start turning the ball over and all kind of nonsense. Stephen Silas, Stephen Silas. I mean, clearly he's never going to coach again. That was the first time he ever coached, and he's not coaching as a head coach ever. Big Ox, I told you, the best thing that happened to Jalen Green was getting Paul Silas away from him. That was the best thing that happened. Yes, Steven Silas. I mean, Jalen Green, he's in his third year. I've never seen anyone in their third year, first year, second year, get criticized as much as he was. You know, he's 22. He's younger than a bunch of rookies that just came into the league, you know. And seeing him finally put it together, I mean, I was thinking to myself, you know, and I was delusional when he, when he drafted him. Like, he was the first draft pick that we've had in a long time, like, you know, second overall pick. So I'm thinking, yo, by the year three, year four, he's going to be averaging 25. I was tripping. He's not averaging that. But seeing what he's doing now, this is what I predicted Jalen Green to be doing, you know what I'm saying, at this point in his career. Right. Now, my biggest fear now is I don't know what we're going to do with all these young guys because we can't keep them all. It's a good problem to have, brother. It's a it good is, but it is. I'm I'm heartbroken because I'm like the one if I had to rank, you know what I'm saying, out of the six young guys we drafted, Jalen's my, you know, that's that's my guy. Of course. And I love Tari Eason. Mm-hmm. I love Cam Whitmore. I'm a Jabari Smith guy myself. I'm Jabari Smith's my guy. That's my guy See, myself. I, I like Jabari. I thought, especially what I see in the summer league, that one game he had where he had the, yep. the game winner. Yep. I was like, oh, this is KD 2.0. I was mm-hmm. tripping. I mean, you know, saying <laughs> You, you get on a high, you know what I'm saying? You, right. you just see mm-hmm. my young guy hit a game winner. I'm over here. Oh my God, he's the, he might we might have to let him go. He might be have to be the one. If we trade, if we have to trade any of our young guys, mm-hmm. he might have to be one to go. I don't want him to be, but but it's a good problem right. to have. If you could get a good, if you could get a really good vet in, in addition, or maybe a maybe not even a vet, but but somebody that's maybe a little bit older than Jabari. That's that's more of a better franchise piece. Even though I don't yeah. like it, I'm gonna, I want to keep Jabari. But when you got young players like that, we can't keep them all because you can't pay everybody. You can't. Right. Right. And, right. I mean, yeah, we need more vet. I mean, getting vets in this year, people thought that you know we were still going to be you know one of the worst teams in the league. I knew it was mm-hmm. going to be good. Now we got 38 wins right now. I don't know if you know this, chill. I checked this like you know saying two games ago when we first got over 500. Yeah. At this point in the season that we are now 38 and 35 we have a better record this year than okc had last year right not saying we're gonna be you know what okc is doing this year but to see i'm already on record i'm already on record saying that i think houston is okc houston next year they okc this year in sacramento last year i think that's where they are next year i'm on record saying i mean that's who i think they are i listened to the episode uh when y'all were talking about you know what the rock could be and you you chill. You weren't thinking that you know what I'm saying we could be a 40 win team. Two I more wins were two more wins were 40 win team. Yeah, that's you great. Know, I that's think great I think yeah. we can. I think we can end the season. You know, win 43 wins. That's that's great. That's great, that's and we can still miss the playoffs. Yeah, I, I don't think I've it. ever. I don't think I've ever seen a team win 11 straight and don't move in the standings. We haven't went up at all. We've been 11th this whole time. Damn. The Western Conference Damn. is. It's a nightmare. Damn, that's crazy. That's crazy. We have not moved. At that's all. crazy. It's yeah, but uh, but hey, breezy, we got to keep it moving. Uh, we got one more topic. I to appreciate get to. y'all. We got a hey, breezy, man, I need my, I need my, my mail, y'all. Need, I'm getting a check. Yo, what hold you on, doing? Hold on. It ain't me. It ain't me. Can I get it's my check? Me. What's going on, hey, man? Look, y'all got y'all merch now. It ain't me. Damn. It ain't me. <laughs> all right, y'all. Have a good one. All right, yeah, breezy. Appreciate you.
Yep. Yeah, yeah, man, for sure, for sure. Let me run through these real quick. Uh, we yep. got one from Teddy Hart. He says, "What do y'all make of the drama between A Rod and the Wolves' current owner reneging on the deal? Oh, he crawfished on the deal. Yeah, we got a contract. I don't understand what the deal. I, I don't understand what the problem is. We had we had a, we had a deal. We had a contract. The contract is you come up with the bread." In a timely manner, and I'll sell you the team. And he did that. So what's the problem? What's going on? I think the problem that we have in Ox is the Minnesota Timberwolves were valued at a certain number. And now that they've gotten better, value has gone up. And because the value has gone up, well, maybe he ain't willing to sell as as, as what he was what, what he was willing to sell before. Because he knows now that this team might is going to be even worth more. So now he ain't willing to sell like he was in the past. But that doesn't matter. You know why that doesn't matter, Big Ox? Because we got a contract. Right, right. That's why. So what? So what's gonna happen? He A Rod just got to take some legal action real quick, or yes, deal yes. It out or? yes. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, because that's yes. crazy. I thought I thought it was the deal was already done. I thought it was too. We got a contract. Yeah. I got to come up and A A Rod and his crew they ended up getting a bunch of people together, which they did. And they got the money. But he ain't selling yet. And the only mm -hmm. thing I was thinking was maybe it wasn't in a timely matter. Right. And there was maybe some language in the contract that said that. But even still, we got the money. So there you have it. Right, right. Uh, so, Chill, we <clears throat> wanted to talk about real quick what, who, who now are the front runners for MVP and why? If you if you got let's say if you got through the three front runners and and why what's the criteria to the criteria to be a, a league MVP nowadays? Well, it's always been about winning, and you've had some anomalies. I mean, twice in the last ten years, I mean, twice in the, since 2017, twice in the last seven years, you've had uh, two guys win the league MVP. That was a six seed. Other than that. Everybody that's won the league MVP has not been lowered in the third seed. That's not happening. And winning has always mattered. Winning will always matter. So a team like the Dallas Mavericks, who at this particular time, I think they fifth in the, I think they sixth in the Western Conference. I mean, Luca, Luca's got to do something astronomical in order for them to win the, in order for him to win the league MVP. When Joker won it. I mean, Joker was basically leading the league in everything. He was doing the same thing that Jabbar had done in the 75-76 season. He basically did the same thing. With all the advanced stats, he was he, he was at the top of the league in everything. Points, rebounds, assists, blocks, steals, defensive, offensive, win shares, all of that stuff. That was Jabbar in 75-76. That's the same thing with, 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 with Joker in 2022, right? So when Russ won it in 20, when Russ won it in 2017, the NBA screwed up. And the NBA screwed up off the strength that they gave it to him because he averaged a triple-double, even though he did lead the league in scoring that year. He did lead the league in assists that year, right? And he did average double-digit rebounds. But the fact that it was a triple-double, that's what they had predicated it on. So now they put themselves in a pretty precarious situation because if he averages another triple-double, then now we have to give it to him again. So then they realized that they were wrong. They kind of took winning out of the equation. So when you see these guys winning the league MVP on lower seeds, they have to do something astronomical in order for them to win. Is Luca having an astronomical season this year? I mean, what is he? Thirty-four, uh, ten and in, in, in eight, something like that. I, I think he's having a. I think he's having a great season. But how conducive is that to winning? Right? How conducive is that to winning? So when I think about who the league MVP is today, I'm, I'm still I'm, I'm still on record. I had Jason Tatum winning it before the season started, but I think Joker. If the season ended today. I think Joker wins it. And I think Joker wins it going away, to be honest with you. Um, I think Shea and I, I, I think Shea and I think Giannis are right behind those. Two. I think Gian Shea and Giannis are right behind them. Because when it matters, okay. when, when when we're talking about winning the league MVP. And if you take Giannis off that Milwaukee Bucks team, I think they're at the bottom of the Eastern Conference. I think that they're I think everything about them has to change. And in the process of everything, I think in the process of everything with them changing. They're not nearly as good with that crew in Milwaukee with, without Giannis on the floor, and that's what I think about when I think about a guy being the most valuable to a, to a team's success. Everybody hears, not everybody. I'm not going to say everybody. Everybody is a stretch. But when people hear MVP, they think it's the best player. No, 
This is the guy who's the most valuable to his team's success. Now, sometimes that's the best player, but that's not always the case. If you go back to the 2005-2006 season, anybody who argues that Kobe Bryant or Steve Nash was a better player than Kobe Bryant, you're high. Right. No question about it. You are definitely high. But when you have a guy, when you have a guy in Steve Nash who's responsible for over 50, almost 50% 50 of that offense without my second best player, who was an all-pro, by the, by the way, for the entire season, and everything that he did, is he more valuable to his team's success? When they finished third in the Western Conference, which is the same conference that the Los Angeles Lakers was in, is he more valuable to his team's success? Yes. Absolutely, he's more valuable. Is he a better player than Bryant? Once again, if you think that, they're high. And you should, and you need to be checked. You definitely need to be checked. Definitely so, need to be evaluated. Right. So when I think about the MVP, I think about how important winning is. And if Luka wins the league MVP as a six seed, again, what you guys are telling me is that winning doesn't matter. But don't make me, don't make me put Luka's league MVP or Joker's league MVP in the same category with James or Jordan or Chamberlain. Don't make me put those league MVPs in the same category because they're not the same. No. Right. Right. Um, so being the MVP, though, uh, in your, your value to your team, does that mean that you have to have the ability to carry? You have to have the ability to carry your squad through deep playoff runs? Absolutely. Well, again, the MVP, it doesn't matter in the postseason. But during right. the regular season, it definitely, it definitely matters how, how far you're able to get your crew during right. the regular season. Right, right. But do you feel like the MVP is that is that caliber? Like you're that caliber player that we're looking for you, like you should be able to carry it, right? So, I, yes. so I, ask, I ask that because the, the title, SGA will carry OKC to an NBA championship, a Western Conference. Um, and you have him number two on mm -hmm. or right behind your Joker joker right so do you think that sga in fact does have the game the skill set to carry this this team let's let's say carry them to the western conference championship let's say carry them to the finals maybe not win it but can sga actually carry this squad that far this team i don't think this year big guys no i don't mm -mm. that's why the mvp is a regular season award right but at some point as the league mvp because you can you can win it when you're young like Derek rose won it in year three does that mean that Derrick Rose, had he not gotten injured, been able to carry a team deep into the playoffs, even though he did carry the Bulls deep into the deep into the Eastern Conference playoffs? When you're young, I mean, your game is still evolving. SG, SGA, I still think he's still becoming a better player. Now, with that being said, I do feel like at some point he's going to be able to carry deep into the playoffs. I, I, I do think that. I don't think this year, though, because I feel like this – this Oklahoma City team, I think I feel like they're too young. And I don't this is what I mean when I say, like when you're talking about the league MVP, not all league MVPs are the same. Mm -hmm. They're just not. Right. So let me so okay. I got I got your top three MVP list, right? Mm -hmm. Can I get another list from you, Chilltown? I want five though. Can I get mm -hmm. five players that have the ability to carry? The five the five players this year that you look at, like, man, that guy, that guy can carry his squad to a deep conference championship run? Uh, we'll go at the top of the list is Joker. Um, Luca, he's shown that he can do it. Giannis. Um, Leonard. Carry. James is too old. James isn't there yet. I mean, James, no, James is already let me, let me get y'all listen to the chat, too, J J J James is already past that. So, again, Joker, um, Luca, Giannis, Leonard, and last but not least, and we're talking about a deep playoff run. I don't think that Miami, I don't think Jimmy Butler can do it again. I don't. I don't think that he can do it again. Um carry that team just him carrying a team kd i don't think he can do it again no i don't um those are just the four guys that i'm thinking about off the top of my head big ox mm -hmm. maybe can anthony get davis more, can we get those four yeah. one more time Chief? so it's joker joker. Uh, joker um luca uh Giannis, 
Leonard. Okay. Steph? Th- th- those are the, no, nah, because I don't think mm-hmm. that, that that Golden State's going far. If, if they even make the playoffs, I can't see him throwing that unit on his back and taking him to the West Finals. And Same thing with Phoenix. I can't see KD throwing that unit on his back and taking him to the West Finals. I'd be surprised if he did that. Let me, considering let me, where they let me, are. Let me give a couple names real quick. No JT, no Donovan Mitchell, no Anthony Edwards. No. Jason Tatum, number five. There you Jason go. Tatum. Okay. Jason Tatum, number five. Okay, perfect, perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a couple more y'all in the lobby. Um, mm-hmm. let's do this. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go. Click on y'all. We got to go rapid fire. Let's do two minute mm-hmm. drills. I'm gonna get y'all in. Y'all get y'all point off. And let's keep it mm-hmm. moving, y'all. I'm gonna talk to. I'm gonna talk to the guys upstairs. We're gonna think about. We're gonna figure out a way to get these Saturdays to two hour shows instead of one and a half, man. We're going we're gonna to get a little more time. So let me let me get here real quick. We got Cowboy Bob. What's up, Cowboy? Salute. Salute. Bizzo, what up? Bizzo, I got what up? Real quick. My two quick points is, one, as far as floor spacing, I'm starting to see a problem with the passing. Like, it's just lazy passing. Guys are just, hey, you pass it in that zone, that person got to get to the spot. Like, if you look at the game with uh, Boston, when Brown was out of position, if you look at how last night with Dante DiVincenzo not expecting to pass because he was out of play. Like, They're not doing as much team practices, so that's getting overlooked with the passing and the assists. So for me, I think if they practice more as a off practice, like me and you practice alone, like Mm -hmm. Gobert and Ant-Man, that would help out. But my real point is, is what I don't understand is how everyone can say someone can be a defensive, I mean, can be an offensive liability, but be great on defense, cannot play in this league. I don't agree with that because if you got a guy like, and I'm not trying to spit hate, but Dane, Dane's offense is great. But his defense, he gives up pretty much half of what he can do on offense, on defense. So how can you use a guy like that? To me, I think that's no value at all. You have to be somewhat balanced because at least Brunson, he's going to give you 27 points, but he's taking charges. You see him getting to the foul line. He was the only one that went to the foul line last night four times out of the entire team. Everybody else went once. So for me, if I had a guard who was doing more and being more involved, I would respect him. Mm-hmm. So I'm just asking, am I wrong in my evaluation and thinking that Dame isn't as good as he was, let's say, two, three years ago? Yeah, he's older now. I mean, Dame doesn't move like he used to. Number two, he's in a different system, so he's used differently in Milwaukee than he was in, in Portland. He's got the ball less in Milwaukee than he does in Portland. He's getting different looks than he was getting in Portland than he does in, in Milwaukee. So, And he's slowing down. He's getting old. He's 33 years old. So, yes, absolutely. He's not the same I, dude he was. I just, I just think that they could have did better than Dame because with Giannis, how he is, these two guys should be leading the league right now. But yeah. that's it. I know you guys got to do rapid fire. Have a good one. Go, 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 Yo, how about this, Big Ox, real quick? This dude, and, if this dude, Andrew G, said, of course, JT is number five. This is the same <laughs> dude who just said to you in the chat, the same dude who just said to you in the chat, Thanks. when the Celtics win it, don't come jumping on our side. You're the biggest front runner that I've ever seen. Stop talking to us, Andrew. Stop talking to us, please. Get out of here already, man. And like and like that Eat one super already. chat we got we got the other day. Oh matter of fact, y'all think you might have been gone already. We got this, we got a late super chat and they asked who are two teams that a couple teams that we actually like besides our teams. And obviously I'm right. a Kings guy, but I've liked the Celtics since Paul since Paul Pierce was over there going crazy in the right. early 2000s. And then when KG got over there my my allegiance was to the Celtics, you know what I mean. So I, I still I still love the Celtics. You know I had Ray John Rondo. Some of my favorite players were Celtics. I like the Celtics. You know I got love for the Celtics. I got love for the Heat. But let me mm-hmm. let's get back to it. We got Emmanuel. Shut up, Andrew. Up, Emmanuel, Shut what's up. going on? Yo, what's good? What up? What up? The what up? new uh, you know positionless All NBA first team. I was wondering what you think the five players, the new five players, going to be. It could be, for the it could be all. It could be team. all bigs. It could be all big guys. Yeah. So it's like you had to pick, like which five players would you pick, like so it far? Could be, it could be all big guys: Joker, Anthony Davis, Joker, Anthony Davis, uh, Giannis. Let's see: Joker, Anthony Davis, Giannis, and B was already hurt, so he's out. But Joker, Anthony Davis, Giannis. Those are the three that I'm thinking about off the top of my head. But I think Jason Tatum and SGA are going to be on first team All NBA. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's it. All right, man. Yep. No problem. Hey, Andrew, stop with the caption. Stop yelling. Ain't nobody listening to you no more. We already know you're a front runner. Shut up. Quiet. 
Hey, get Tim Hardaway off the floor. Get him off the floor, context. Get I, I've been, I've been, I, I've been trying to tell you Pack that we got to get him out of there. Like this, he's he's, he's missing wide up. open threes. He's he thinks he's Jr. Awesome. I don't know what's happening with him. Pack him up. But I gotta I gotta highlight you with this. Um, the question I do have is in regards to the way that you talk about Luca and him. I'm um, having the ball in his hand a little bit too much for your liking. Why do you don't say that about Jalen Brunson? I do say that about Jalen Brunson. I, I I said that earlier today about I don't like point guards who shoot a lot. No, I, I, I'm not. Oh, okay, that. okay. So you are you with that? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then so okay, copy. So to to um, I, I said the I same thing real quick. I, like context. Luka, I said the same yeah. thing. I said the same thing about James in 2009 when he led the Cavs in points, rebounds, assists, blocks, and steals. Like why he got to do that much? Why does he have to do that much in order for them to win? No. But, but to be fair, though, um, um, Chill, the thing about it is also you got to remember schemes play a part into it too, right? right. Um, where the initiate the where the initiation is happening, who are the initiate uh, initiators of the offense? Not everybody has equal opportunity, like as far as the Kings, you know what I mean? Like that style of um, you know, split screens and things of that nature. Some teams are where Luca has to kind of probe, probe, probe command the double team because to be fair mm -hmm. in the beginning of the of uh, the game a lot of times they don't double luca off the rip immediately they get to wait to see if he's if he's cooking if he's hitting right. his shots if he, so i think i'm um, sure you got to kind of give him grace because i think it's more so i'm probing the defense seeing how they're gonna play me if i'm gonna get singled i'm gonna put 73 on you guys like i did to the hawks um but if they start doubling he'll get off the ball so i think you gotta just just i think it's more so how how you evaluate Luca? I understand the idea, and I think the raw numbers back yeah. up your point. But when you're watching out the game and you're seeing them throughout the game, and how is he dissecting the offense? I think it's not as uh, ill. That I don't think it's as bad as the way that you make it. Now the point I gotta I gotta strike back as well with the Rudy Gobert thing. The Rudy Gobert thing. Jesus Christ, chill. I'm with you. Don't get me wrong. Great vertical threat. But his hands are shaky from time to time. They're not that bad, yo. They're it not. Is. They're not as I'm bad as you. They're not, I'm man. Tell it's, it's, it's not so much. Don't get me wrong. Like, he can catch passes. And I don't get me wrong. Uh, right. It's not as bad as the way I'm seeing it, right? But in those critical moments, I feel like it's one of those things, chill. And you got to also remember the, the philosophy of the NBA has changed, right? Where, where dumping it down to the big man, even if you have the mismatch, it still slows down the offense and the name right. of the game is about pace. So right. Anthony Edwards as a guard, any twitchy fast guard is going to assume by me getting downhill, think about mm. the rotation, right? If, if uh, Rudy Gobert gets the, the little man on him, if I beat the big man, who's going to meet me at the rim. You get what I'm saying? I'm going right. to have a little man meeting me at the rim. So I'm going to take my chances on getting that, that instead of, relying on Rudy Gobert to turn over his right shoulder, things of that nature. It's a trust right. issue, but I also think the pace of the game also changes that. Also, that must be that that must be that New York style of basketball, man. Y'all guards don't be want to give it up to the man, I don't hey, know several star tags. If I can head you tweet my way into the lane. <laughs> that's that that's that New York stuff. That's that saying? Brooklyn ball, man. But text, I do got I do gotta keep it moving, fam. I don't I don't got a choice, bro. It's not I, I got, I, I don't got the choice, Tex. I got. And Indiana me. handled the Lakers, though. Chill. Let's talk about. <laughs> let's talk about that. Yeah. Garbage. Yeah. <laughs> pack, pack, pack them up too. Pack them up too. All right, Tex. I appreciate you, fam. Always. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I had to keep it moving, y'all. We got these silver chats I got to get through real quick. Mm -hmm. Let me see. We got Sports PSP. Better dunker, D Wade or Vince Carter? Vince. What type of questions you ask, PSP? Um, thoughts on the big three offer to Caitlin Clark? It says a lot about the WNBA. They, the WNBA need to step their game up. That's what they do. Fast. Fast. Teddy Hart. Russ went from winning MVP due to triple doubles to not even being named an all-star while averaging one. Hate narrative influence in awards. Yeah. Yeah, Teddy. That's crazy. MVP is too often the unofficial offensive player of the year. If there was an OPOY award, the MVP could go to who really deserves it value-wise, in my opinion. You're spitting right now, Teddy. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, you're spitting right now, Teddy. We need to get – wow, that's a fact. That's crazy. How come there's a DPOY and then an MVP? Like, that's crazy. Yeah. They also have it in pro, bas pro baseball, too. I mean, you got an offensive right. player of the year. Yeah. Andra, one five seven eight nine. Chill. Luca's winning percentage is sixty four. Giannis is at sixty three. I think Milwaukee got a better record than the than the Dallas Mavericks. So 
What are we talking about? He's, he's saying you just made a case for Luca over, over Giannis. No, I didn't. I think Giannis is ahead. Of, I think Giannis is ahead of uh, Luca in the in the MVP in the MVP race. What up, Breezy? Breezy we, what on up? Way, we on the way out, but we can holler at you for a quick minute. What's up, bro? What up? Uh, yeah, I see it's the two minute drill. Shout the oxen, uh, chill. Uh, yep. I just want to let you know, Kenny Anderson. He said, Kenny Anderson. He said, love back. You know, last time I was chilling with chill, big ox, and I'm saying you was like, yo, you want to see Kenny Anderson at the Rucker? I sent it to Kenny Anderson. He sent love back. Oh, uh, so shout, shout the chill. You know what I'm saying, shout yeah. the big ox. Um, that being said. Also, you know, I hear a lot of rhetoric about Jalen Green and how in six years he's going to be the top two guard, and I hear no mention of Cam Thomas insulted. Oh. But but that I'll say I'll say this: if we just beat the Chicago Bulls, it should be no issue about who's the MIP out of Kobe White and Cam Thomas. Cam Thomas was cooking. Also, to put some pepper in the pot, I think SGA's tenor towards. The OKC could be better than uh what Kevin Durant did. He could put in more work. He could reach the finals. He could have deeper playoff runs. He could step up in when it's time to sign. I don't think he gonna dip on OKC. I enjoying another team. He definitely, he definitely not going to Denver. He definitely not doing that. He not going to Denver. He definitely not doing that. So don't even concern yourself with that. He not doing that. <laughs> Word. So I, I know I can't say long, say much, but again, hopefully this show do go to two hours. I, I was listening to the conversations. It's a great show. I, again, like I said, I love this show. And again, man, Kitty Anderson sent love. I just wanted to say that. I, I say hey, Ice. Love my dude. Love my dude, K Ice. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. K Ice, right. super nice with the pill. Good to talk to you, brother. You know where to find us at. Absolutely. Appreciate you, Brizzy, man. It's always love when Brooklyn in the house, man. Always Brooklyn love in, the in the house. No house. doubt about it. Good to talk yeah, to no you, doubt. brother. Hey, man, PC fam, this was a hell of a Saturday show. Do y'all see now why I love these Saturday mornings? The sun is shining. Y'all, man, y'all go outside and get some sun on your skin. It's a beautiful day. Get some cardio. Get your steps in. Man, go smell some flowers. Listen to the birds chirping. I can hear them. I've been hearing them chirping all morning. Y'all go enjoy your life. You got to learn how to get excited about your life, man. It's good basketball on the day. It's a beautiful day. And it's probably some sundresses out there, man. Y'all better go enjoy it. Chill town. What you got for him? My, my, my boy, Big Ox, you ever notice how on Saturday his energy a little bit different on Saturday than it is on every other day? Like, he, he, he more charged on Saturday. I can dig it. You know, I definitely can dig it. But I tell you what, guys, put on a suit. Don't drink and drive. Drink water. Hey, man, call your mother. Call yeah. your mother. Please yeah. call your mother. And if you're in the area and you had too much to drink, they will call my man up. Here come scoop you. Call him up. I promise you. He will tell him where you at. He will come get you. I promise you that. But until yeah. then, take it light. We'll take it. Absolutely, guys. It was good to see y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, no sir. All right. It.